Later this week, the gradually recovering IPO market will be put to the test when Birkenstock comes public. Yeah, Birkenstock. The German sandal maker plans to sell $1.5 billion worth of stock, and I think this one is worth focusing on, both because it's big, but also more importantly because it's a little unusual. See, Birkenstock and its investment bankers are pursuing a pretty aggressive valuation by any standard. <clears throat> this weekend, Reuters reported that there's enough demand for the deal to come at the high end of the proposed price range. I was shocked at that. That's $49 per share, which would imply a market capitalization of under, just under $10 billion. Hey, that's more than double what Birkenstock's current private equity owner paid to acquire it just two and a half years ago. Do you think it really increased that much in value? Long story short, if you want to buy this stock after it comes public, you really, you really got to like this story plenty. Otherwise, it is just simply unjustifiable. <laughs> Frankly, it's almost never a good idea to buy something right after the IPO. I know people are going to do it. I wish you won't. People are going to use market orders. I wish they wouldn't. You typically get a better price if you just wait until it cools down. But that goes double for Birkenstock. This year's other big IPOs were deliberately underpriced to get people interested. That is not the case here. See, we're starting to progress. So what's the story? Everybody knows Birkenstock's the ultimate hippie brand turned yuppie brand. These things have been seen a surge of popularity in recent years, in large part because of the pandemic. They, that won them a whole new generation of customers, including my wife. Of course, there's no way to tell if there's a permanent thing or if it's just a fad. We know younger people's tastes can quickly change. You know, they're like... That said, Birkenstock's been putting up some truly magnificent numbers, great growth, solid profitability, margins headed in the right direction. See, about a decade ago, the Birkenstock family, which controlled the company from its founding in 1774 until it sailed to a private equity firm in 2021, finally brought in outside management, including a current CEO, Oliver Reeser. He's the new, uh, the new team professionalized the business and growth soared. In 2021, Birkenstock put up 32% revenue growth. In 2022, it was 29%. And for the last nine months, ending in June, it was 21%. Now, let's talk about the private equity owner here, L. Catterton, which is partly owned by LVMH. That's the French luxury goods Colossus. Since buying Birkenstock in 2021, L. Catterton and LVMH have aggressively promoted the brand, including two collaborations with Christian Dior. That's another LVMH property. It's worked. From 2020 through 2022, Birkenstock's average selling price grew at a 16% compound annual clip, while average selling prices were up another 15% in the nine months ending this June. Ah, uh, but there's a flip side to these numbers. While Birkenstock put up terrific revenue growth thanks to higher prices, their unit growth is a lot less impressive. It's up just 5% year over year in the nine months ending this June. Now, that's not something you want to see as the global economy slows down. Something that's going to make it harder for them to keep raising prices. Something you sh should be very worried about. What else? Birkenstock's got big expansion plans in Asia, which currently is a tiny part of the business. Asia Pacific, the Middle East, and Africa only make up 10% of sales. I honestly have no idea how that's going to go over. But LVMH has been incredibly successful at growing its brands in China. Check the positive on this one. The other thing the company's done is expand its margins, uh, and not just through price hikes. They've rationalized their roster of wholesale partners, grown their own direct-to-consumer business to cut out the retail middleman, and cleaned up the supply chain. As a result, Birkenstock's gross margin has expanded from 55% in 2020 to 61% now. Between the revenue growth and the margin expansion, Birkenstock was able to put up impressive earnings growth from 2020 through 2022. Although their net profit was down 20% year over year in the nine months ending this June, I'm calling that a little worrisome. See, pros and cons. What else do you need to know? Okay, because this is a private equity IPO, less than 11 million shares are being sold by Birkenstock to raise money, with L. Catterton selling 21.5 million shares to take profits. Even after the deal, the private equity firm will still own 80% of the business, so they're the controlling shareholder for certain. Like so many private equity outfits, they loaded up Birkenstock with debt, company used some of the proceeds to clean up its balance sheet, but it's still not going to be great. That's a real drag on profitability going forward. Doesn't help that a huge chunk of this float is floating rate debt, which is the last thing you want when rates are soaring. However, I still expect Birkenstock to have an explosive IPO. See, this is an iconic brand, and much of its shares are already spoken for. Remember what I said? It's going to open up too high. Of the $1.5 billion offering, $325 million worth of stock will be bought by the Arnaud family. They're the main owners of LVMH, really smart people. That's somewhat encouraging because it indicates the family wants to stay involved with the business, even as their affiliated private equity firm, El Catterin, begins its exit. And this is what something is going to be used to come, really to combat any things I talked about that were negative. Meanwhile, a hedge fund and Norwegian sovereign wealth fund would buy another $300 million worth of the offering. So 42% of the shares are being sold are already spoken for. 
And that's one reason I suspect Birkenstock stock could soar right out of the gate. I have no reason to doubt the Reuters report that the deal will price at the high end of the range at 49 bucks. And with much of the IP already spoken for, I would be surprised if it pops to the high 50s, maybe even the low 60s, where I would be very, very wary. Don't buy, don't buy, don't buy, don't buy, don't buy. Even if we use the high end of the price range, $49, we're talking about a $10 billion market cap for Birkenstock. And an enterprise value of more than $11 billion if we annualize the earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization numbers for the nine-month period ending in June. We could be talking about 516 million euros in EBITDA this year, which translates to 542 million. That would give Birkenstock an enterprise multiple of 20.5. That's the enterprise value divided by the EBITDA, something we use for companies with a lot of debt like this one. That kind of valuation would put Birkenstock near the high end of for what Wall Street's willing to pay for footwear and apparel companies. How about some comparison? Nike's at 20, Decker's is at 15.5, Crocs is at 6. Only on holdings is more expensive on this basis. That is an enterprise multiple of 27.5. But that's because the Swiss running shoemaker has a much, much faster growth rate. If Wall Street decides that Birkenstock deserves to trade more than, like, Crocs, well, then look out below. <laughs> and again, that's where I'd be trading at, at the high end of the price range, 49 bucks. Assuming a sizable first day spike, the stock's likely to get much more expensive than that, and then I don't count on its buying. In the end, Birkenstock has a great product, one that, they, they, that even found its way into the incredibly popular Barbie movie. Ah. But you need to be very careful with the stock here for the IPO on Wednesday. I worry that it'll be too expensive right out of the gate and will only get more expensive in the initial feeding frenzy. <laughs> Bottom line, lots of IPOs have had hard, hot starts, but that almost always ends badly for the people who buy the stock in the open market with a market order. If you can get a piece on the actual deal, of course, that's another story. But if you're just buying it like everybody else in the open market, I think you're going to get absolutely pummeled. I say you're better off on the sidelines waiting for the stock to cool down because it probably will. Bad Money is back after the break. Coming up, Kramer takes your calls and the sky is the limit. It's a fast fire lightning round. Next. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.